What's up guys? It's me, Jamar Dawson. I hope you're doing great today. If you're like me, you're just getting thawed out from the great freeze of 2021, you know, down in Mississippi, Louisiana, Texas, we're not used to this wintry weather. Um, but you know, things are kind of getting back to normal. Hopefully it's back to normal for you. But with all this stuff going on with the pandemic, with the storms of late summer 2020, people are talking about survival again. My wife is rewatching The Walking Dead. And you know, I love survival. I love talking about it. I think it's educational. I think it's fun. I think it's very important, especially for those who have households and trying to keep your family safe. So one of the cool things about topics of survival, you get to talk about what is your best survival weapon. If you are in a situation where it's like Katrina, where you're maybe without power for a couple of weeks and maybe you don't have access to the stores, maybe you have to do some stuff and either protect yourself or you know, go in and find some food out in the forest what is the best survival weapon? I believe it's the simple, rugged, but powerful home defense shotgun. Let's talk about why. So number one, the home defense shotgun is great for hunting. It may not be the obvious choice, but it really is. Last season, I bagged an animal when I was out there hunting. I only went one time and I was able to get a squirrel. I know it's not like anything spectacular, but I went out with my home defense shotgun. This one right here, Mossberg 590. And I said, let me see and prove to myself that it could be done and really I had no problems whatsoever. Because of the 18 and a half inch barrel, I was able to kind of creep through the woods a little bit easier. I always stalk hunt. I haven't been in a tree stand in about a decade or so. So, you know, I've walked up on deer. I've kind of waited for deer to kind of come by. I've been as close as 10 yards away. So I certainly believe if you do a stalking approach, you can get them. But this last time I went out, I was just out there in the woods, saw a squirrel. He wasn't like extremely close, but this thing was able to reach out with the right loads. He was dead before he hit the ground. I was able to take him, skin him, fry him, and eat him. It was pretty good. One thing I'm gonna talk about a lot in this video is the versatility of the home defense shotgun. I mean, you could have something like a one ounce slug. You could have traditional buckshot. You could have bird shot. Uh, you can even have defense loads. So, I mean, it's so versatile. If you're out there in the woods, you might see a deer. You might have your buckshot in there or your slugs. If you have some squirrels that come out, some rabbits, you could quickly, with a few movements of the hand, pop in some bird shot or whatnot and take them down and put them in your stew or whatever you would be making. But you can make adjustments really quick. It's so versatile. As it relates to birds, you're gonna be okay. As long as you can close that gap and take a shot within 25 or 35 yards, you should be able to have some good success with waterfowl. So if you've seen my top five home defense weapons video, you know that the shotgun is the one that rules supreme. My primary choice for home defense, it turns cover into concealment. If you use buckshot or if you're using slugs, I mean, heck, if you're even using birdshot, at close range within a typical house, you're gonna be able to cause considerable damage to someone who is on the attack, someone with a weapon making a threat to you and your family and trying to act out on that threat, the shotgun, any type of shotgun, but particularly the defense shotgun, is going to be very formidable to mount a defense with. A lot of people say, oh, well, what about the limitations that you have with the number of shells that you can store in the magazine tube? I mean, with buckshot, you're shooting nine, nine millimeter size balls at a adversary. Uh, I think that the amount of volume of lead being pushed down range is enough to kind of even things out even though you're only getting maybe six plus one, you know, six on the side saddle and a few maybe on the buttstock saddle and maybe a couple on your strap. But I mean, I think it's even it out with every shot that you pull, just the volume of lead being dispersed. Additional thing, this kind of falls on the fence, kind of not really, but if you are needing to breach a door and shoot a lock, it's much easier to do with a shotgun than it is to do with a rifle or a pistol. Ammo availability is another thing, in my opinion, that's a very critical factor, and this isn't just necessarily during an event, but before an event, you could more than reasonably enough procure everything that you need to. During the pandemic, I've been able to get a whole bunch of different types of ammo, birdshot, buckshot, defense loads, just about every single thing that I wanted. Now, I wasn't able to find like Dragon's Breath or anything like that, but they don't sell that locally anyway. The point that I'm trying to make is there's a lot of ammo out there. You can buy that now. And even during a crisis in a pinch, you could probably find somebody because everybody has a shotgun virtually, probably your neighbor or family member that has some type of ammunition that you could borrow 
and procure until that event is over. Low maintenance is my next point. One thing that you'll never use to define your home defense shotgun is the word diva. You'll never say that about a rugged pump action home defense shotgun. You just won't. It's not like an AR. It's not like some of these other fancy guns where you kind of have to make sure it's lubricated and make sure that it's clean and wiped down and all this other stuff. There's just a few moving parts in this thing, particularly the pump action shotgun. And you know, they just work, man. They have big extractors. Uh, just everything is just oversized, it seems like, but it's rugged. Um, and it's not too heavy, but it's just super balanced. And because of all these things, you don't have to clean them as much. And if you're out in the field and you need to go and take a small game to help you and your family survive during maybe a three week power out situation, you don't want to hear the click and not hear the bang because there's a little bit of dust obstructing the firing pin or something crazy like that. You don't have those problems typically with shotguns. And so to me, you know, the less time you're spent in your house maintaining your weapon, the more time you can be out in the field going and get some food or using it for protection. The last point I want to make here is defense shotguns are typically low on the cost scale. You guys know that's near and dear to my heart. I am a frugal person for life. And with a home defense shotgun, you don't need to go and spend in the thousands of dollars. Really, you can get a good Mossberg 500 series shotgun for like $360. You can get a Mossberg Maverick 88 in the hundred something dollar range. There's some good Stevens shotguns for like 250. I think I saw one a couple weeks ago. Ghost ring sights, uh, five plus one in the magazine tube for 250 bucks. You can get some really good quality shotguns for a great price. Overall, I think the home defense shotgun is the best option that you can get in a survival situation simply because it's a workhorse and it's so versatile. Now, if you're gonna be fighting gangs, like Walking Dead style, this probably won't be the first gun that I grab. But if you're just in a normal, most likely situation that a person may experience once or twice in their lifetime, especially us in the South who still remember Katrina, then you know what? Something like this should be good to make you feel confident in the situation you have until power is restored, until order and things like that are restored. I highly doubt we're gonna have these zombie apocalypse situations and situations where folks invade off the, the beaches and all that kind of stuff, but just practical things. I'm a practical guy, that's why I have this practical gun because when times are good, I can use this. When it's time to hunt, I can use this. When it's time to compete even. If I'm doing three gun, you really could use a home defense style shotgun until you build up your repertoire and you feel comfortable with really diving into competition and buying something else. So the highest marks I can give, I give to the home defense shotgun. It doesn't do every single thing absolutely perfect, but it does enough things well and it does enough things consistently that this is the gun I would grab in a survival situation. So guys, thanks for clicking on the video. I wanna know what your number one gun would be in a survival situation. Like if you like the video, subscribe if you'd like to, and we'll talk soon. Stay safe, God bless, peace. I only do the dogs if they suicide. Chinese wings with the fries, you know I need that. Priest on my neck, super fly, you know I.